The LEGO Modular Building series made its debut in 2007 and continues to introduce new sets annually. With the recent release of the Natural History Museum, I've decided to rank these sets from worst to best. My list might surprise many of you, so feel free to share your own rankings. Before we dive into the countdown, I'm Lucas, and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you're not subscribed, please click the subscribe button to support the growth of my channel. Now, let's begin the countdown. Ranking at number 19 is Market Street, the second addition to the Modular Building series. Crafted by Eric Brock, a passionate LEGO enthusiast from the Netherlands, under the LEGO Factory theme, which came before LEGO Ideas. While it aimed to be a standout structure, my perception is that it falls short. The notable absence of a genuine market in a building designated as a market street is a considerable letdown. At the 18th spot, I placed Café Corner, the inaugural release in the Modular Building series. Unveiled in April 2007, it drew inspiration from a corner building in Denmark. The set introduced several distinctive building techniques, including annexes, the use of fanned minifigure, sized skis for decoration, angled corners, and a captivating 3D façade. The intricately designed façade is a notable highlight. However, what leaves me less impressed is the absence of any interior detailing. Given that it was the first set in the series, it's conceivable that LEGO was still exploring the direction to take at that point. Taking the 17th spot is Palace Cinema, the eighth addition to the modular building line and the third corner building. The set pays homage to the Egyptian revival architecture of the early 20th century, but incorporates Chinese-like cultural elements reminiscent of Hollywood's Grauman's Chinese theater. This attempt to blend two distinct styles is a drawback for me, as it doesn't harmonize effectively. Particularly, the terracotta-style roof is a feature that, in my opinion, gives it more of a Chinese restaurant vibe than a cinema. The interior, too, falls short in making a compelling statement. Securing the 16th position is Corner Garage, the 14th addition to the modular building series and the 5th corner building. Despite being part of a well-established series, it doesn't seamlessly blend with the other modular buildings. Additionally, the pairing of a gas station and a veterinarian's office strikes me as an odd combination. Perhaps a gym would have been a more fitting choice in my view. Taking the 15th spot is Grand Emporium, the second corner building and fifth installment in the modular building series, launched in March 2010. Crafted to emulate an authentic early 20th century department store, this set boasts an exterior featuring an ice cream stand, store window displays, a window washer platform, and a rooftop billboard. While the three-floor building is rich in interior details, I've often sensed that the interior design takes a back seat when compared to the facade of the building. Claiming the 14th spot is Pet Shop, a groundbreaking set as the first in the series with two distinct buildings. These structures, linked by Technic pins like other modular buildings, offer versatile placement options. The brownstone-style townhouse includes an elevated ground floor over a crawl space, and the sand blue building serves as the pet shop. While the brown house's interior may seem somewhat sparse, there's an artist at work. The pet shop has a comprehensive interior encompassing a toilet, bed, kitchen and fireplace. Taking the 13th spot is the soon-to-retire Assembly Square and one of the largest in the series. Distinguished by the highest minifigure count, reaching nine when considering all characters. The ground level of Assembly Square boasts a vibrant array featuring a bakery, florist shop, and a cafe. While the ground floor stands out for its bustling activity, both internally and externally, the upper floor fails to maintain the same level of appeal, creating a sense of disconnection between the two segments. Securing the 12th position is the Green Grocer, despite its somewhat modest interior. Being only the third installment in the series, its front facade compensates with an abundance of intricate details. Notable features encompass a blue and white awning, doors and windows that open, multiple layers in the facade, and skillfully crafted coins. The rooftop terrace, adorned with rich detailing, adds an extra layer of charm. At number 11, I place the fire brigade from 2009, a true LEGO city staple. 
its large front facade, rich, dark red color, and the 1932 brick-built lettering capture the essence of the time period, serving as an Easter egg for the LEGO Group's founding date. The set's expandability, with options to build upward or sideways, coupled with the inclusion of a fire truck, makes it a must-have. While the interior is somewhat modest, especially considering the time of its release, it remains an excellent addition to any LEGO city. A crucial addition to your LEGO city is unquestionably the Town Hall. I've positioned this modular set at number 10 in the ranking. The front facade doesn't quite sit well with me. The columns seem somewhat disproportionate when compared to the rest of the building, as if LEGO struggled to master their design, a similar issue encountered with the Natural History Museum. Despite this, the Town Hall boasts numerous interior details, featuring a functional elevator, board tables and balconies. Claiming the ninth spot on the list is another set bidding farewell this year, the Bookshop. This vibrant addition is the 15th set in the modular building line, hitting the shelves in January 2020. Distinguished by its dual building structure reminiscent of the pet shop, it marks the second set in the series to feature two separate structures. Departing from the contemporary American designs of the preceding downtown diner and corner garage, the bookshop returns to a more classical and European architectural style. Now, let's delve into the eighth position occupied by Downtown Diner. This structure brings back the teal color, absent from production since 2008. Ground floor captures the essence of a 1950s style diner, complete with a curved front window, red bar stools, a classic bubbler style jukebox, a soda fountain equipped counter, and an open plan kitchen. The captivating curvature of the facade sets it apart within the series, featuring 20th century art deco styling in pink and teal, crowned by a prominent pink diner sign. Securing the seventh position is the detective's office. While its exterior might lean towards simplicity with a boxy design, the impeccable color scheme, skillfully crafted masonry brick facade, and captivating brick-built lettering bestow a visually striking appearance. Delving inside reveals no disappointment, Al's barbershop and a meticulously detailed pool hall create a cosy atmosphere. The harmonious blend of architectural elements and the inviting interior ambiance significantly contributes to its elevated ranking. Taking the sixth spot is the Parisian restaurant. Revered by Lego enthusiasts, it earns favor for its breathtaking exterior and intricate interior. The alluring front shop design establishes a benchmark for visual allure. Upon stepping inside, the set maintains its impressive stature with a generously spaced restaurant. The art studio, complete with a cast iron heater, easel, paintbrush, and two pieces of Mondrian style modernist art, is a standout feature. The cleverly designed apartment, featuring a pull down Murphy bed, kitchenette, and fireplace, adds a final touch of brilliance. Entering the top five, a surprising twist places Brickbank above the Parisian restaurant. What captivates me is its straightforward yet highly effective facade, adorned with numerous intricate details. Successfully mirroring a real bank, it boasts commendable features such as sand green windows and clever part usage on the roof. While the competition excels in intricate detailing and contrasting colors, Brickbank's charm shines through. Additionally, the ground floor interior, featuring a humorous money laundering storyline, adds an extra layer of appeal. Securing the fourth spot is the recent release, the Natural History Museum. As the 19th addition to the modular building series and the largest to date, it undeniably commands attention in your Lego city. The alluring front facade and intricately detailed roof are sure to capture everyone's gaze. Inside, the exhibition space hosts a variety of displays, with the Brachiosaurus taking center stage. For a comprehensive review, check out the link provided in the video. Taking the third spot is the soon-to-be-retired police station. A vital component of any cityscape, its exterior boasts an appealing design, providing opportunities for imaginative expansion in both height and width. Inside, the donut shop captures attention with its charm, while the police station's interior is brimming with humorous storytelling details. 
The amusing donut thief tale adds a comedic twist, hearkening back to the days of the old laundromat from the brick bank, enhancing the overall charm of showcasing an illicit business adjacent to a police station. Taking the second spot is the recently released Jazz Club. While it might not be everyone's favorite, I personally adore it. The front facade in particular captivates me with its excellent use of dark red and gray details, and the cornices are nothing short of impressive. In my opinion, it stands out as one of the finest Lego facades ever crafted. The charming pizzeria on the ground floor, seamlessly connected to the jazz club, is a place I'd undoubtedly frequent if I were a minifigure. Claiming the top spot is the boutique hotel, commemorating the 15th anniversary of the modular building series. This architectural gem seamlessly blends a hotel and an art gallery, drawing inspiration, perhaps, from the renowned Le Negresco Hotel in Nice, France. Elegance defines its aesthetic with a captivating color palette, intricate window details, and a distinctly non-linear wall, adding to its extraordinary charm. The gallery space, showcasing art types close to my heart, further elevates its overall appeal and thus concludes my compilation of modular buildings. Reflecting on the 17-year journey, it's evident how LEGO's modular creations have evolved, and I anticipate each new release to surpass its predecessor. An interesting observation during this listing process was that, even in the latest releases, LEGO consistently invests significant effort in crafting well-designed interiors for the ground floor, yet the same attention seems to wane on the upper levels. What are your thoughts? I'd love to hear from you and learn about your list. Until next time, happy building.